welcome to Coding Adventures. Uh, it's here six o'clock, past six o'clock actually, and as you can tell, I have a way to tell the time. And uh, in this episode of uh, the Coding Adventure series, we'll actually learn together how to build this analog clock. It's a very simple project. <laughs> I hope I'll not mess it up, but just in case, be there for me on the chat and uh, help me down the way. So let's get started. All right, so I'm back and I'm here in my coding editor. I opened the coding editor. And before we actually start to implement that analog clock, we're gonna first implement a very small digital clock just to learn how to read in JavaScript dates, how to uh, basically get the hour, the current hour, current minute and current second. And uh, this is very uh, simple. Basically in JavaScript, we have a built-in API. Uh, we're gonna use the new date, uh, or actually the date object, <laughs> we're gonna instantiate it with new date. Uh, it's this kind of construct exists in JavaScript for many, many years. Uh, nowadays, uh, they are working to replace it with a much better uh, substitute, where they are working to implement the temporal object, but nevertheless, in this uh, project, we're gonna still use the classical form that date. So without further ado, let's see how we read a date in JavaScript. And this is pretty simple. Uh, if we want to read a date, first of all, we need to instantiate this new uh, this date object. So we're gonna say new date. And once to instantiate it, we have access to its methods and properties. And what such method is get hour, just like this. So uh, if we take for perhaps in a variable and we say get uh, d dot get hour or get hours actually, <laughs> uh, d is the object, uh, we should get the hour the current hour in a variable, which we can print easily on the screen. So let's do that. All right, we'll run this program and we see the hour is 18, which is basically <laughs> 6 p.m. Um, and in the same way, we can basically get the current minute and the current seconds using the get minutes and get seconds. So let's do that. Get minutes and get seconds. Of course, we'll have to say hour, minute, and second, and let's display all of this. We'll put them on vertical, minute and second, and let's see if we can read the current date and the current hour with minutes and second. All right, so let's run it. And it's 6 p.m. and three minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> we should be basically right based on my clock. But as you can see here, you already, you already see this is a static snapshot. We are reading this just once. Uh, if we want to have a nice clock or a nice watch, digital watch display on the screen, we have basically to constantly read the states and display on the screen, right? So that's uh, easily done with the loop function here in the CodeGraphy platform or in any other project based on the P5.js library or any other canvas-based project in JavaScript. So let's define the loop function. Uh, the loop function, uh, just a quick uh, rem uh, quick hint here, it's automatically invoked by us by the browser up to 60 times per second. So let's first proceed and clear the screen. And perhaps we should basically um, say display digital clock. We should invoke a function, which actually is this one. We're gonna encapsulate all this loop code into this function. So we'll have function display digital clock. And let's take this loose code from here and have it there. So we read this hour, minute, seconds. We now have to display it on the screen. Um, so let's compose a string out of this and display it with the text instruction. So perhaps the string is hour plus a separator such as uh, Colin is actually a good separator for uh, separa uh, separating uh, hours from minutes uh, and seconds plus minute plus another separator, same one, <laughs> and plus second. All right, and now since we have this one in a string, we can display it uh, anywhere on the screen. Perhaps let me display it in the top left corner really quickly here. So the program sh should look fine. And indeed we have a digital <laughs> clock. <laughs> We should close the lesson here. Uh, 
but actually we said that we want to achieve more. We want to implement an analog clock, not a digital one. A digital one is pretty trivial to implement. So uh, let's keep this program actually and extend it a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna name this one analog clock. And um, let me save it just in case my computer crashes. I'm gonna go ahead and place this uh, program on the chat. Analog clock is not complete by any means, but uh, uh, you can nevertheless open it. Uh, and if you refresh the page, you should get a newer version each time I'm saving it here. All right, so um, we have now uh, the mechanism to read the dates and uh, we can see that basically we can implement pretty easily uh, the clock. Now, the question is how we're gonna implement that analog clock. And for this, let's make a plan here. Let me grab my notebook and plan a little bit what we want to achieve or how do we want to display the analog clock, all right? <laughs> so this is the canvas, which in our case, it's 800 by 600 pixels. It has the centers here somewhere at 400 and 300. So we want to draw basically here a big circle which is basically the clock frame, the face of the clock. And on this one, we want to draw to display the various hours, perhaps like uh, here should be zero, one, two, here is three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. That that should be quite nice. So we have an idea where basically the uh, hand of the clock is indicating and then we want to display three hands one hand for the hour one for the minute and one for the second so uh, right now it's six o'clock so we should have the hour hand pointing down perhaps we can even make it a little bit thicker to <laughs> indicate this is an hour uh, hand and seven minutes so this is the seven minutes this will be the min minutes hand and then the seconds hand you know, it's also a line, perhaps a little bit uh, thinner line that moves. So uh, all of these uh, lines, let's remember, are moving in all of these hands are moving in this direction because this is the direction in which the hands of the clock are moving. So uh, clockwise, <laughs> this is the term clockwise. And uh, this is what we want, want to achieve, basically, right? So uh, let's uh, take baby steps and first draw the face of the clock, the frame, exactly like we put here. And then we'll see how to draw the hands and how to animate them eventually and have a really, really interesting and perhaps even useful analog clock. All right, so let's get started here. And similar to how we implemented here display digital clock, let's have one, a function display analog clock. And the intent is to call this function from the same loop so we can regenerate the clock each time. We'll draw it entirely. We we'll redraw re the frame, we we'll redraw the uh, hours, we we'll redraw the hands. That's easier to, easier way to do it in this moment. Anyway, so uh, let's uh, get started here. So, and uh, first let's draw that frame that we mentioned. So, um, hmm, perhaps we should say, um, yeah, we should do a circle. Um, let's parameterize this one, display analog clock where we want to, perhaps we should put some parameters where we want to display it, basically the center of that circle and then how big we want to do it. So the radius of that cir uh, circle. So that will be an X, Y and a radius R. And we want to display it initially in the middle of the screen with a certain radius of 200. <laughs> so it's quite big in the middle of the screen. Therefore here we can do a circle at X, Y and radius R. Uh, pretty simple kind of instruction. Eventually you can define a stroke, uh, a stroke weight, a fill, something like that. So let's do that. Uh, we can have a stroke um, black eventually, a stroke weight one, and fill white. Although these are the defaults anyway. But uh, let's try it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we did so much work for having a circle in the middle of the screen. Um, yeah, let's put 
a nice background here just to have a little bit of contrast background light blue i like this color and um, also when we are displaying the digital clock we can we can keep this one by the way just to make sure that our analog clock it's uh, matching the digital one just let me uh, go really quickly here and say no stroke and fill black the text will be we look much sharper and nicer this way uh, anyway it's just a cosmetic all right so we have the frame of the clock we have the digital one still ticking so now let's see how can we do how can we draw those numbers basically around the clock and here we should remember about the transformation from polar to cartesian such important mathematical concepts that we discussed in one of the previous lessons but uh, don't worry we're gonna do a small recap right now and if you want you can obviously watch the previous lessons so the main problem is how can we have some numbers here like numbers from 0 to 11 uh, but this one's arranged as you can see around this circle so basically on a circle um, we need to figure out the x and y of each of these numbers right we have to display here a zero this coordinate is pretty easy to figure out because here it's middle of the screen and this is plus radius is pretty easy to figure out but what will be this coordinate for this one and for this one and so on so we're gonna what we know for sure we know the angle because we go in a certain direction with a certain angle we know for each number what will be the angle so we need a way to convert from this angle value that we know uh, to basically a cartesian coordinate and x and y on this cartesian plane so uh, <laughs> please refer to the previous lessons but anyway i think it's still good to do a quick refresh about how to can we do this conversion shall we won't take longer than five minutes so i have here my notebook again and i'm drawing a canvas and what we want to do basically we want to like we said to draw to put some numbers on a circle right so at one point we need to figure out we may, perhaps we want to draw uh, to display here number one right because here it's uh zero or 12 o'clock here is one o'clock so what will be the coordinates question is x and y of this point where you're gonna draw a really nice one <laughs> here and then of course we need the coordinates of this one and, and so on and so forth so let's take a look here and understand how can we figure out these coordinates we already know the coordinates of the circle let's call this one x c and y c from center <laughs> x center and y center and now look here what's happening first of all let me draw some an horizontal line hmm, perhaps i can use a different color here um yeah this one and let me draw also the vertical one from here and just bear with me a second we need to figure out let me use more colors because <laughs> probably colors are helping <laughs> i hope <laughs> so um question is indeed what are the x and y coordinates knowing what we mentioned that we know knowing that we know the center of the circle which of course we know these ones uh it's known value we already drew the circle in uh, the clock in the center of the screen and we are also knowing this angle theta or a or angle right so how can we know the angle of course we know it because we're gonna <laughs> define it we're gonna loop through all the angles by rotating the clock actually the clock goes in this way <laughs> clockwise right so the hands of the clock going in this way in this way we're gonna rotate the angle perhaps 30 degrees 30 more 30 more and so on and so forth so at any point we know basically this theta here this angle right so what else we know well uh we need to figure out that uh, the x uh, this x and y so let's look here and let's name this uh, line that i drew vertically vertically dy and dx and let's remember a little bit of trigon trigonometry from school uh let's use the sign 
Do you know the sine of theta, what it is? Well, in this right triangle that is formed by projecting this uh, uh, <laughs> dot on the horizontal line, sine of theta is uh, basically the opposite, opposite side. So this is the opposite, <laughs> opposite. And this one is the adjacent. Dx is the adjacent side or leg in this right triangle. And this one is hypotenuse. So sine of theta is the dy, the opposite side, over hypotenuse. But notice, what is the hypotenuse here? It's exactly the radius, the r, <laughs> the radius of this circle on which we want to place the dot, right? So therefore, from this formula, we can figure out the dy. So dy, it's r times sine of theta. All right, and this is a pretty important thing that we found out. So let's write again the expression for cosinus in this triangle. Cosinus of theta is the adjacent one, so it's the dx uh, side over hypotenuse, which is also r. So that means the dx, it's uh, r times cosinus of theta. And these are pretty, pretty important formulas to remember here, at least in this case, we find, we figure out what is dx and dy. So what is dx and dy? Basically these ones, right? dy this one and dx this one. So why are these important? Well, because x, and now we can write them, x, which is this point here, we start from the center, it's x center plus this dx, right, on horizontal. And dx is r times cosine of theta. And now what is y? y is y center. And um, now you'd say plus dy, but actually in, the, in our system of coordinates, the y-axis goes this way and the x-axis goes this way. Therefore, as we go towards the top, uh, we go towards smaller and smaller numbers. So here we have zero, here we have 600 or 599, and here we have 800. So here we go, we add, we go towards positive and here towards the bottom, we get towards a positive to our bigger numbers. Therefore, the y on the top here is smaller than the one here. Therefore, here it's actually minus, right? Because we are subtracting, we are going towards the top, uh, not towards the bottom. We are going against the, the way the numbers are growing. So this one is minus r times sine of theta. And actually, these are the formulas that we need, uh, not, the, not the intermediate ones above. So let me put them in some nice, <laughs> nice rectangle here. And we're going to see how to implement this one in the code and basically use them to play some numbers around the clock. All right. So, oops, <laughs> you don't see the formulas. So these are the formulas that we just uh, derived. Um, basically, as we said, uh, starting doing this math on this triangle here. All right. And then all we have to do, and we're going to place the numbers when we place here, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and so on, so on. We have to cycle through all these angles. So it's clockwise. <laughs> Actually angles uh, in a circle, they go counterclockwise or angles from zero to 360 goes counterclockwise. Now we have to circle clockwise. So we're gonna um, loop for the theta and we know the R, we know the center and we figure out X and Y and with these ones, we're gonna display basically there uh, a number. <laughs> so that was a, such a lengthy explanation. So let's see how we impl implement these ones in, the, uh, in our code. Perhaps we should create a separate function, something such as display clock numbers. Yeah, we should do that, all right. Let's do it here in the co code here. Function display clock numbers. And uh, again, we'll take as coordinates. Um, you know what? Let's name them exactly like we put on the paper. Uh, so this is the x center, y center, and eventually the radius. And we can also rename this one xc and yc, just to have the same convention across the board, right? 
So when we display this, we specify the x center of the clock, y center of the clock, and then uh, the radius. And now we want to display the clock numbers. Again, uh, we're gonna make use of these formulas that we just uh, come up with you doing these calculations. <laughs> should be pretty easy, right? So let's get started. We should start, <laughs> let's warm up. Start with a little bit of setting up the attributes for drawing. Uh, so no stroke and eventually fill black. It's likely like we displayed the other ones. Uh, and now we should loop, right? We are looping, um, we are looping the, uh, we should loop through the angles, right? But instead of looping through the angles, what we can do, uh, we should loop through the, um, we want to, 12 divisions, right? Because we want to divide, to put the numbers just for the hours. So we, we can say basically for let hour equal to zero, hour less than 12, hour uh, plus plus, because at the end of the day, these numbers represents the hours on the clock, right? So we want to display them. And the question is here, what will be the angle based on the hour? So that's something that we have to figure out how can we figure out for each hour what will be the angle? And once we figure out this one, well, what we all we can do is basically we'll have that we'll find the x as being x center plus r, uh, and I'm looking here on the paper is uh, r times cosinus of this angle, and then the y is y center minus r times sinus of this angle. And then, of course, we're going to display uh, the hour, actually. <laughs> we're going to display the actual hour at x and y coordinate, right? All right, so looks okay. Uh, we put these formulas, we're encoding them in the code. But now we have to figure out what will be the hour angle based on hour. And there are different ways to figure out because there are 360 degrees on a circle and there are 12 hours. So we can divide 360 by 12 and should be... 30, so basically there are 30, we go in 30 uh, degree increment. That's one way of doing it. But uh, let me show it another way. I, I want to complicate things a little bit here, <laughs> just for fun, actually not for fun, just for the, with the purpose to uh, make use of one of the functions that we used in the past. And just a remembering, so we're gonna use a function called map. And map, what is doing, is mapping an interval basically is mapping a value let's say the value v that goes in an interval let's say it's going in the interval 0 and 12 and basically the hour here and is mapping to a value that is going in the interval 0 and 360 something like that and the result should be actually since th these ones are angles and these are hours the result should be actually the angle itself. So we'll calculate it using just this map, right? So like we said, if we have an interval, perhaps this interval 0 and 12, and we have a much, 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 much bigger interval, perhaps 0 and 360. If we pick a random, if the V here, let's say is pointing to a number, let's say it's pointing straight in the middle to 6, here in the middle is 6, basically the function should return a number that is in the middle of this interval, so 180 basically. And when v is zero, is it when, when v, <laughs> so the v is looping on the smaller interval, and then the smaller interval is mapped to the bigger interval, and a value from the bigger interval is returned. It's a very useful function that we are using it in many, many ways. This function is actually coming from the p5.js library. You can read more about it in the p5.js uh, reference. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah, let me show it to you just in case you want to further explore it another time. So it's p5.js map. But um, yeah, so this is the function and you can see here some examples. All right, uh, but let me go back to the drawing board and let's see how to use this one in our case because it's not as simple as here actually. <laughs> the problem is the following. The hours are going indeed. So let's put them on the inside the hours, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. All right, the hours are going in this way. 
so clockwise, right? But on a circle, the angles, the angles is here zero. Here we have 180, here we have 270, uh, uh, here, sorry, <laughs> here, <laughs> forget my math, 90 here, 180, 270, and back to 360, right? So the angles are going this way. And not only that, they are going that way, but as you can see, to number zero correspond 90 here. Uh, <laughs> let me, let me better display this one, all right? So to zero corresponds 90, to number three corresponds zero. So what we have to do is to have to map the interval 0, 12, so the hours, so the, and they go in this direction to actually the other interval and actually to the interval that started, uh, um, that starts here, right? Starts at the same position. And of course it goes in the other direction. So th the map here, instead of mapping it to 0, 360, um, we should map actually, let me correct it here a little bit. We should map it to the interval instead of zero, perhaps it's 360 when it goes here plus another 90. So 360 plus 90 and it goes up to 90. All right, up to 90 here. <laughs> so it starts here, so it goes up to 90. So we, we map this interval in the other way. Notice that it goes in the other uh, order because you can use map to map two intervals and they can be in the different order. All right, so perhaps there are too many explanations here. I hope that this one is working. So let me get back here to my code and use this map function in the way I mentioned it. So uh, we're going to map the hour, like we said, and all right. And as, as I said, I want to overcomplicate things. We, we could just divide it 360 by, by 12 and, the, and increment by 30 degrees. But uh, let's make use of this map, see if we can get it right with the map. So the hour goes from 0 to 12. And when it's hour 0, actually, the angles, it's 360 plus 90. I let the computer do the calculation. And when it comes back on the other side and the hour is 12, it's 90. And I'm putting this in this order, because if I just put them in the other order, like this, uh, it means they go in the, in the same direction. But actually, as we saw, hours and angles go in a different direction. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Let me run it and see if it makes sense. Oops, we don't have anything. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, because we are not calling the function, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Uh, so let's call this function with x, c, y, c, and r. And let's see what we are getting. Well, uh, we are quite there. We have just to adjust a little bit, perhaps the radius, make it a little bit, a little bit a tight shorter. Um, or we can make the um, yeah, we can make more, a tight longer. <laughs> Either one works. So um, yeah, maybe shorter. So instead here of calling maybe a touch shorter, like 90% we multiply by 0 0.9. Yeah, now I like it. The hours are inside the clock frame. So what we have to do is to apply the same technique and I really like this map function. I'm gonna use it in the also for the hands. So let's see how we display a hand. Perhaps we should create a function here as well, exactly like we dis did for the display clock numbers. Let's have a function, display clock hand, right? And um, I think we can get used with just one function. We don't need a function for displaying hours, one minute, one seconds. I think we can get just with a function. So we want to display, uh, for instance, in case of minutes or hours, we're gonna pass the actual hour. And then let's put here a max interval. Because if we're gonna invoke this function for the hours, we say, okay, I want to display hour three, but the hour goes up to 12. But when I'm gonna display the minute 30, but the minutes goes up to 60, something like that. So I think uh, it's good to have this one here because we can reuse these functions for hours and minutes and seconds. And we need to pass also the, uh, X center and Y center. And perhaps we can also display um, the radius. Yeah, I, I think we need the radius, right? Um, or 
the radius of the hand <laughs> doesn't make sense actually we need to pass somehow the radius here uh, but if we run this again exactly like with the numbers we, the radius is up to the frame here up to the circle so we, we need some sort of a size that is depending on the radius so let's name this one size which will be the size of the hand that we want to display right so um, with this being said, eventually, if things work correctly, we should go here and after display the numbers, um, we, should dis we should call this function for displaying the seconds, the minutes and the hours. Let's display it for the seconds first, because it's the most fun. Seconds are passing really quickly, so we can debug it. So we need to pass a se Oops, we don't have the seconds. Uh, let's, uh, let's reuse the same code that we have here when we're saying displaying digital clock. I can just copy this one. We can extract it in a separate function and pass as arguments. But for now, let's say we are fine copying it. All right. So we need the second here to pass the second as a value, right? And this one goes seconds go up to 60. And then the hand we should display it starting from the center of that circle. And perhaps the size should be up to the number. Or maybe we should multiply by 0 0.85 or something like that, a little bit smaller, just not to override the numbers. Um, around these ranges, perhaps 0 0.8. Make the hands a little bit smaller, right? And this one should be the hand for seconds. Let's have just one. And let's see how to draw it. And we are drawing it in the same way. If we're coming back to the drawing board here when we get basically did the calculations, how to display the numbers on the side. Um, <laughs> all we have to do right now is actually draw the hypotenuse here. So for this one, we need these coordinates, which actually we calculate in the same, same, same way. So we need the coordinates X and Y or the other end of the line. We know already this uh, end that is at XC and YC. The other one, X and Y, we can calculate them really quickly. Uh, we need the we know the width is that 0 0.8 times r that we are passing it. Yeah, I think we have all the data here. Uh, what we don't have, <laughs> exactly like we here, we need a way in which we basically convert from hour to actually the angle theta. Uh, but that should not be too difficult, right? Because it's the same calculation as we did before with that map. It's actually, actually it's exactly the same because we did it for hours. So we should be in good shape, I guess. <laughs> so let's, um, let me move, move this function down just to have it close to the other one. Where is the other one? Um, oh, clock numbers. It was right in the right good position here. So to have it on the screen, both of them. All right. So uh, all we have to do right now, is also to uh, go uh, define the, find out the angle. We don't uh, loop through any of ours, but draw a line directly. So let's find the angle. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, should be exactly this one, right? Instead of our here, we should put a V and V goes from zero to the max interval because it's not zero to 12. Oh, we're doing seconds here, but should be the same <laughs> nevertheless. Uh, seconds are aligned with the hours. Uh, the, when it's hour zero, it's also second zero. So it should be the same, exactly the same one. All right. So in this way, uh, we need to figure out the X and Y, which are exactly this one. And with this one figured out, all we have to do is just draw a line from X center to the Y center to the X and Y. And we also set the size. Uh, what would be the size? What? Oh. Right, instead of R here, this is size. <laughs> you could have left R. You could have left R, but it's fine. Size, size works, right? So let's have a stroke. Stroke um, black and stroke weight. Now this is interesting. We're gonna put a stroke weight of one, but Perhaps we should pass another uh, parameter. So when we are displaying hours, we should make them a little bit thicker. But uh, that's an optimization. All right. <laughs> and our second hand is working fine. <laughs> so I, I think the rest is just details. Let's see how, 
quickly how can we implement the minutes and hour. Uh, let's see if we can reuse this one, like we said, display hand clock. So we display the second, let's display the minute. Minute also goes up to 60. Perhaps minutes, I should make them a little bit shorter, the line, 07, and hour. And hours goes up to 12, and perhaps this one, 06, 65, close to the minutes, and it's almost all right. There is one problem. It's not very natural looking. The second, because it's moving so fast, is fine, but notice the hour. The hour says that it's seven, six o'clock and 36 minutes. Normally on a regular clock, the hour will be here somewhere in between six and seven. It doesn't remain stuck on the current hour and jumps to seven just like that when the hour changes. For the second hand, it's fine, uh, but hours and minutes as well, right? Because it's perhaps also minutes, but more importantly, hour, we should gradually move it between six and seven, right? So right now the hour should indicate not six, but perhaps 6.75, because it's uh, 6.37. <laughs> so should be a value between six and seven. So uh, for this one, instead of actually displaying the hour, maybe we should add, so, Hours is six and then goes to seven. So we should have real values between six and seven. So we should have one extra unit divided in subdivision. So we can make use of the map function again and map the minutes uh, that goes from, from zero to 60 to zero to one, right? So we add that zero to one to here. So let's put here, we map the minutes. I, I'm, I told you that I want to make use of the map function. We have the minute that goes from zero to 60, we map it to zero to one, right? So uh, basically when the minute is zero, this number will be zero. When the minute is 30, the map will return 0 0.5. So the hour, we are adding that to, to the hour, so it should be 6.5, should be in the middle there. I hope I'm right. Right, so the, <laughs> the hour is looking a little bit better this time. And we can do the same with the minute. It's not that critical. We can map the seconds that goes from zero. Okay, let's do that. We map the second that goes from zero to 60 to the interval zero and one. And to make it a little bit more realistic, we said we also make, let's make the lines a little bit thicker. So when we are displaying hand clock, not only this one, but let's send a thickness here, a size, or yeah, a thickness or um, mm, a weight, a weight. Yeah, let's say name it a weight or thickness. So perhaps for the second is one. For the second, uh, for the for the minutes it's a two, and for the hours it's a four. Make the how our hand really thick. So let's make this function accept also weight. Wait for the line or thickness, thickness, thick, thickness. <laughs> and instead of actually doing stroke one, we stroke with this thickness. So if we run this one, yeah. <laughs> and our clock is working just fine. Yep, it's working just fine. <laughs> so, um, what can we do to it? It's, uh, yeah, we can, you know, at this point we can transform, we can have hands instead of drawing them with lines, we can make them some pointy triangles and make a really fancy clock. Uh, <laughs> all sorts of nice things we can do. But nevertheless, the clock is pretty functional and this time we can check it against the digital clock. <laughs> we can clean up the code if we want, we can remove the digital clock since we don't need it or we can leave it in place. We can have a comparison between the clock. That's one way of doing it. So um, I was thinking, um, okay, let me let me show you something a little bit more about the map here. Perhaps let me go to this one, to this function that is, yeah, to this one, the initial one. Display clock numbers, right? When we did this mapping, <laughs> really, really weird uh, mapping here. And um, let's 
do, let's also use map for now, but map it differently. So angle, let's say the angle, we map it, we map the hour that goes from 0 to 12, we map it to 0 to 360. Like you'd probably see, in an, you know, this is the naive implementation. If we don't see it on paper, probably we we'll think this is the way to do. But if we run it, <laughs> all right, uh, notice, first of all, all the numbers are in the wrong, wrong, wrong position. Uh, so it starts zero here, it should start here. Well, we can adjust probably for that one. If we subtract from the angle 90 degrees, let's see. Yep, nope. <laughs> if we subtract 90 degrees comes here and they go in the wrong direction, but they go in the wrong direction because of have a minus here, which is the correct way because the uh, coordinate system on the computer, they go from the small number on, on the top of the screen to the big number on the bottom. But if we just put here a plus, yep. <laughs> in a weird way, now it looks correct. So uh, we simplify the map function or the mapping um, by rotating with 90 degrees. And we also by incorrectly putting here a plus just to flip it around, which um, some people in some implementation will see that this way. I prefer to have it a little bit more mathematically correct to have it with a minus here and actually have it map like this one. All right, let me see if I put it correctly, save it, run it. Yeah, we still have it correctly. All right, so, um, and of course, as I mentioned, we don't have to use the map function at all. A map is a function from p5.js. If you want to implement this outside of p5.js, you, you have two options. Either don't use map function, just uh, cycle through the angles in 30 degrees increment, or even better, implement your own function. It's such a fun exercise. It's a very simple function. You can implement it in one line of code, <laughs> really one line of code. Uh, you basically it takes a value and the ranges of one interval and the ranges of the other interval and you have to figure out a value in between the second interval based uh, on the initial value and the first interval. So it's a pretty easy function to implement, but anyway, nevertheless, comes built in in p5.js and in the codegapi.com environment here. All right, so uh, I hope that you like this mini exercise. They are just uh, 70 lines of code, actually, 50 something line of code if we ignore the digital clock that you don't need it, you can remove it. Uh, it's not part of the scope of having an analog clock. And I also hope that you learned about polar coordinates and a little bit more about the map function. And you also implemented a beautiful and very useful analog clock. Uh, with this being said, uh, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I hope that you like the exercise. Wish you happy coding and um, See you next time.